Welcome to the Classic Cafe in the heart of downtown busy St. John's. A colorfully appointed bistro with bistro style furnishings, colorful wall hangings, and a view of the Narrows. And there aren't many restaurants that can say they have that. Hello, I'm Carl Wells, food critic for The Telegram. And I'm Chef Steve Watson, Central Dairies. Steve, this is our Newfoundland themed show, and we have a wonderful Newfoundlander, Newfoundlander as our guest in the kitchen today. She is Ms. Zita Cobb. And I'm going to be preparing a beautiful baked beans with pork, and uh, it's going to be top notch. And that is something that her mother made for her, yes. and she's going to love it. And Zita, of course, uh, began the Shorefest Foundation a few years ago, and they have a mission. And that mission is? is to promote ecotourism and uh, most of all the food that we do have here in Newfoundland and Labrador and particularly in, uh, in Fogo, whether it be canning, whether it be uh, seafood uh, or a baker. For sure, she's a big booster of that and so are we. And later we're actually going to go to Fogo Island and show you some of the things that uh, Shorefast has been involved with and are currently involved with, uh, such as the annual Partridge Berry Harvest Festival, which I attended and enjoyed very, very much indeed. Now, speaking of Newfoundland food and traditional food, you have a very classic Newfoundland dish with you. You can't get more traditional than this, Carl. I've got nice fish and brews with some hardtack bread, and we've got some scrunchions, some salt fish, and some onions in there. And, and the uh, fish and brews, of course, uh, with brews that originated from Pure Factory, is one of our sponsors. And I have this amazing dish here. It's sea scallops wrapped in bacon, done on skewers and grilled off. I can't wait to get some lemon on those and, uh, and taste them. Anyway, uh, let's get our Newfoundland theme show on the Whoa. road. Beat bacon. Steve, you know, sometimes restaurants, believe it or not, serve too much food and people can't eat it all. So they should take it home. Ask the restaurant, wrap it up, I'll take it home, enjoy it all over again tomorrow. That's the thing. Great idea, Carl, because I hate to see anything going in the garbage. Me too. Well, our guest today in the One Chef One Critic Kitchen hails from Fogo Island. She is a woman of business, although she's stepping a little bit back from the world of business these days to engage in things she's passionate about. And one of the things she's most passionate about is uh, helping the economy generally of Newfoundland and Labrador, but specifically Fogo Island, her home. And I want you to welcome Zita Cobb. <laughs> nice to see you, Zita. Hello, Carl. Come in, please. Now, uh, See, you know, before we went on, uh, you were telling me the definition of fogo, which I'd never heard before. What does fogo mean? Fogo is uh, from a Portuguese word for fire. Everybody thinks it means fog. The fog is in here in St. John's. We don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> we get a lot of it, yeah. Yes. <laughs> You're already in tourism mode, aren't you, my dear? <laughs> That's really interesting. Fogo, fog in, in Portuguese. In Portuguese. Well, anyway. No, fire. Oh, fire. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> That's right. Fire. We're fog. St. Yes. John's yes. is fog. You're fire. Yes. Uh, but anyway, one of the things that I'm really passionate about, and I know you are as well, is Newfoundland cuisine. Uh, a lot of people think, well, we don't really have a cuisine in Newfoundland, but we actually do. And do. It's, it's the type of foods, the salt fish and so forth, that we've been having uh, since we were tots and generations before us ate this food. But somehow or other, we've kind of gotten away from our, our ancestral food, if you want to call it that. And, uh, but you, you, are, you, as I am, are, are very interested in sort of reminding people of this, keeping it alive. Absolutely, and reimagining it as well. I mean, I think that embodied in our food is, is our history and our culture and things that, you know, make your heart beat faster. Absolutely and, correct. You know, we've had a love affair with the deep fryer, but I think yeah. we're going to get over it. Yeah. And uh, I think we're doing, going to do a recipe today, which you're going to be interested in, because you were telling me your mom actually did this recipe for you. Um, and, you know, it's amazing the similarity. 
between uh, foods of different cultures because uh, we were talking about how this particular dish is very similar to the French cassoulet yes. and there are other dishes that are similar to it from other cultures but this is this is Newfoundland baked beans with pork yes pork chops. bring it on <laughs> yeah, bring it on bring it on <laughs> Well, I, 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 what I've got here, as, as, as Cal rightly said, we're going to make some baked beans. And the, the assembling of it doesn't take very long at all. But the cooking process is eight to ten hours in the oven, so to speak. So we'll get, we'll get ready right away. So first of all, what I had was some white navy beans. Mm. And what I did with them, Zita, all I did was just soak them overnight. And uh, then I boiled them for... <coughs> 30 minutes, which I've got here, right mm -hmm. into, into a casserole here. So Very of course, distinctive. Of course, growing up, we would have boil, boiled beans. Just like that? With some salt, salt beef, probably. You mm -hmm. know. Yeah. Exactly. So what I've got here is some uh, molasses. I'm just going to add some ketchup to that. Is there a secret to keeping the, the jackets on the beans? Um, I, I believe it's in the soaking. If you soak them long no, enough no. beforehand, mm -hmm. then the, the jackets will stay there. Mm -hmm. so yeah, to speak. If you try to boil them without soaking them, you'll you'll find a lot all goes all over the place. break up yeah. exactly a little bit of uh, cider vinegar in there we'll put a touch of mustard and depending on how sweet you you would like it that's uh, a lot of mustard i love that uh, again personal preference yes. cooking is an art you know yeah. and the more people play around or experiment with this dish, then maybe think, well, my mother used to make it that mm -hmm. way you know and then i'm just going to put a little bit of brown sugar in there not too much and we'll mix that around a little bit with some hot water now, did you salt the beans before you boiled them? Did I salt them? Yes. No. None, none whatsoever. That's none whatsoever. What I you'd say. Because I'm going to be putting into it. You can either put some salt pork into it, but I'm actually going to be putting some uh, bacon into it as well. So, yeah. There. So the bacon would have a little bit of salt. Sit it? into there as well. Exactly. So Zita, you just uh, uh, not too many months ago announced a, a, a big uh, project for Fogo, and yes. it has to do with. Uh, generating tourism for ecology, the culture of Fogo Island, the cuisine of Fogo Island. Mm -hmm. uh, that's pretty exciting. It is very exciting. And, you know, we have a, a sibling island right next to us, Change Island, of which course. is very much yeah. part of our plans. And the National Geographic people came up with a wonderful word which uh, describes all of this, which is called geotourism. And it's a combination of ecotourism, which is about a physical place, and cultural tourism, which is about the traditions of the people, put together into something that if we do this well, and we have every intention of doing it well, it should enhance the character of the people and the place, as opposed to taking from it, which so many of the tourism projects around the world, of course, have done. And you can't talk about cultural tourism, and you shouldn't talk about people without talking about food. Of course. And it's a very yeah. important part of yeah. it. As you can see there, Zita, I've just put some chopped onion in, some sliced onion on the bottom of it, and I'm just going to add our mix there of all our sweetening goodness into the... Now, I know you the and the Shorefast Foundation, which uh, you are a big part of, uh, have been involved in, in developing uh, a lot of projects already on Fogo Island, one of which I was fortunate enough to attend not too long ago, which was your Partridge Berry Festival, which was a first. Yes. And that, was, that went really, really well. That was a really exciting festival. It has a very long name, so we just call it the Partridge Bay Festival. It's the Partridge Bay Harvest Festival. It has, right. It's on the Thanksgiving weekend in the fall yep. when we do uh, come into harvest season. Yeah, of course. And, yeah. you know, Fogo Islanders have been growing things for years. When I was growing up, we were, we were pretty much self-sufficient for vegetables. We lost our way in that a little bit, but we found our way back. And so this festival gives, you know, a stage to all of the people who are growing things in the front of their house or the back of their house of course, or wherever yeah. they are doing it. Yeah. And uh, Fogo Island's covered in berries, you know. What kind of berries? We Partridge are berries, so, obviously. We are so lucky. Partridge berries, absolutely. And um, did you know that partridge berries are the highest berries in the world for antioxidants? Higher than blueberries. I, I was going to say, I thought that was the blueberry, but... No, that's, and someone actually said to me the other day, we need to be writing a letter to Madonna, because well, apparently... Well, that's a selling feature right there. Yeah, <laughs> apparently she gets her blueberries from Nova Scotia. Well, I think partridge berries from Fogo Island will, I think will we, do yeah, the yeah. trick. I mean, and, and it's not a little bit better, it's a yeah. lot better. Yeah. Uh, we also have lots and lots of wild blueberries and yeah. marsh berries. Yeah. And uh, there are some plums and... Um, the marsh berries are the ones that are not well understood and are the most intriguing berry, lots of those. Uh, what does the marsh berry taste like? It tastes a bit like the bog. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? it's, but of it's a the good bog. thing. Of the bog. Of the bog. Well, like bake apples are a bit... Yeah, like, you know? oh, of course. That's, see, yeah. That's very kind like of earthy. Soily, yes. earthy. Earthy yeah, exactly. flavor, yeah. yeah. And uh, has a lot of potential in, in cooking. And, of course, the health benefits are immense. I start every day, I'm, I'm trying to talk to Stephen, see, making yogurt. Mm -hmm. I start every day with, with yogurt, and I want to have yogurt from Newfoundland, of course, mm -hmm. and partridge berries. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, As you can see, I've just put some slab beautiful. bacon over the top there. Again, thinking of a little bit of presentation while cooking, cooking from the heart, so to speak. So I will cover that now and pop it into the oven for seven to eight hours and top it up with a little bit of water if, if need be. And you can go spread the fish on the flake or something uh, while that's cooking. And actually, once, once that's cooked, maybe we can put some salt fish into it as yes. well. Well, speaking oh, of yeah. salt fish, we, can't, we cannot ignore this beautiful product here. This is salt fish which Zita brought from Fogo Island. It was actually salted recently on Fogo Island. But this is different from the dry salt fish that we're so used to in Newfoundland. Mm -hmm. Just talk a little bit about that. In the, in the old days, if you will, we used to salt the fish and then dry it, sun dry it on flakes. And the reason was we didn't have refrigeration and we were shipping to markets that didn't have refrigeration. But, um, and I'm pretty sure it was the Icelandic people who discovered that, you know, the drying really isn't necessary. That to get the, the, the texture and the flavor of salt cod, just salt it and then refrigerate it or freeze it. It never really will freeze really hard with the salt in it. That's right. And that's what's been done with this. In fact, we've been experimenting with how long to salt it. And it turns out in our experiments that you really only need three hours in heavy salt. Is that right? That's, uh, that's all. That, uh, mm -hmm. We used to put it in all summer yeah. because and we didn't have to Essentially, it's the same result. <laughs> yeah. It's the same, same result, taste. exactly. But obviously, uh, there's a lot of moisture in there too. I mean, yes, and now this one's been has been soaked. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's ready to go. It's a beautiful, beautiful product. Yeah. I so Zita, um, just, 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 just before we finish, about an hour before the uh, the beans are finished, <coughs> I would then just season some pork chops and lay them on the top and then finish them with the lid on the, on the oven as well. But for the magic of TV, we've got one ready. So Very good. I'll just put this one over here then, see? Yeah, that would be great. So we'll just stand back to the side there. there. Go. Perfect. I can't wait to see this dish. <laughs> <laughs> this I'm, looks heavy. Uh, I'm pretty excited about this. I would just put that lid on there. Did you sear the pork? Or you, you didn't sear the pork? No, I just, just want all the flavors to go through oh, it. And away we wow. go there, look, you see? Mm -hmm. Nicely seasoned and not shy with the no, pepper. Not shy with the pepper. Lovely. Just like the cassoulet, we can't yes. wait to stir it in. Can Again, we call it delicious. Newfoundland cassoulet? I think we should. Okay. We'll go island yeah. cassoulet. Yes, that's it. That's exactly in a nice fiery is. pot, yeah. you know yes. that kind of a thing. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, it'd be nice to maybe put some uh, duck confit in there, maybe, or some smoked oh, sausage. Work or, on that. Yes. Or some mousse sausage in there as well. And a bit of salt cod. And a bit of salt cod. Well, that's the thing about a, a peasant dish like that. Really, is you can sort of put whatever whatever you like in there. You know, as long as you. As mm -hmm. long as you're reasonable about it, mm -hmm. you know, it has to sort of, you know, things have to go together. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's, a, that's a fabulous dish. Uh, no, very simple to make. The, the cooking mm -hmm. process is all done in the oven. So we'll and whatever go. you put in just has to stand up to eight hours of cooking. That's it. <laughs> that's <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> At a slow cooking temperature, yes. a slow cooking temperature. Now, uh, what, uh, what sorts of things do you have planned for Fogo uh, Island this uh, coming summer? Because uh, I know a lot of people now, especially with the way the economy is going, they want to stay in Newfoundland and Labrador mm -hmm. and do a lot of uh, traveling. I, I'm fully anticipating that'll be the case this summer. Uh, and I, look, I've heard of the Brimstone Festival, I've heard of the, uh, the, the uh, punt races that you have down there. Indeed. Just yes. talk about a little bit about well, some of those Fogo Island has about three, if not four, really important music festivals, mm. which have been around for many years. I think one of the festivals, maybe the Brimstone one, is celebrating maybe 20 years. Yes. And so, yeah. and really, it's a, it's a really great opportunity to catch some Newfoundland music and local performers. We and also, local food. And local food, food yeah. yes, indeed. And uh, the punt race is in, I can't recall the date, maybe late July or early August. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's on the website. Yep. And that is a really important event. It's the only seagoing race in the world using traditional craft. Great. And, uh, you know, it's a two and a half hour race for the winner. Oh. That's, the losers can take, no, that, you know. That's a but, heck of a race. That's a heck of a race. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, Nobody you, loses you, in a only, race only like somebody, that. Only, only somebody from Fogo is able to win a race like that. <laughs> that's right. The crowd here at the regatta. <laughs> anyway, listen, I'm going to go down and get a wine to go with this, and perhaps you can tell Steve the website that you were just mentioning. Yes, it's the Fogo Island Regatta has its own website, which is www.fogoislandregatta.com. And how many boats would be there? In the well, room? last year we had uh, 21 punts, or oh, really? punts. Yeah. and these were punts that were used in the cod fishery, you know. So is it one person or two people? Two rowers. Uh, two, two, two rowers, rowers. okay. Yeah. Yeah. And Hello, Andrew. Hello, Carl. Great Andrew, to see you. the NLC. Wine Devo, <laughs> <laughs> whatever uh, you want to call. We have um, Zita Cobb upstairs. She's with the Shorefest Foundation, and they're doing incredible things down on Fogo Island to help develop the tourism. Fogo, industry. I hear yeah. there's faces in Fogo, believe it or not. Well, that's right, there are. 
Are you from Fogo? No relation to me, no. Oh. I've actually been and visited, but uh, oh, good for you. I'm from the St. John's Faces. Yeah, it's a, it's a great place. Anyway, uh, Zine is very much into the traditional food of Newfoundland, so today we made pork chops and beans for her. Baked beans, it's mm, a great, great Sounds like a southern dish. French cassoulet to me. Exactly. Yeah. Ooh, a full-bodied, exactly like rich, cassoulet. big, yeah. earthy dish. Yeah. We need a wine very similar. Well, let's, uh, it's a southern uh, French, French dish, so let's do some southern French wines. Sounds good to me. Chateau de Serim, Corbier, mm -hmm. 2005, a blend of uh, Syrah, Carignan, and Grenache. Mm. Very new world in style, very fruit forward, uh, beautiful offering from France these days, under $20. Oh, that's go good. great with the dish. That's good. Okay. Uh, something a little, little, very close to the same region, Cahors. Uh, there have been vines planted in this region of France for over 2,000 years. One of the first places that the Romans planted vines in France. Uh, beautiful wine, primarily Malbec. Uh, again, very uh, big, rich wine to match the dish. So, uh, just, just a second now, because sometimes uh, wine labels are confusing for people. Uh, when I look at this uh, label, yes, uh, Cahors is what? The region. Okay, that's not the winery? No, the winery is Croix de Main. Uh, Cahors is the region, and you need to know the region to know what grapes are allowed here. Uh, this has to be minimum 70% Malbec, and it can include uh, some Tanat and Merlot. So we actually don't have the name of the wine here, or the grape. We just have the name of the winery, which is Croix du Maine, yes. and the name of the location, Cahors. Definitely. Okay, well that's something that we... Yes, now you and, need, and in France you will need to know the, the region to know what grapes are allowed okay. by law. Yeah. Uh, the final one is a special uh, Chateau Neuf de Pop from the Southern Rhone. And the uh, Chateau Neuf de Pop can contain up to 13 different grape varieties, Carl. Uh, five or six of them are actually white. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a beautiful product, very rustic, will match the rustic uh, notes in your dish. Okay. You know what? I'm going to go with this one. Cahors, the inky black wines of Cahors. And that sounds like a perfect, uh, perfect match for our, uh, pork and beans. Thanks, Give my I best to Zita. Yeah, I will. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, Zita, as you can see, the pork just cooked beautifully. We just put it in there about an hour before it was cooked, and uh, it's beautifully braised in there as well. And oh, it smells it? wonderful. Oh, it does, doesn't it's it? Got, it's got oh. saying all the right things. Yes. I can smell it all, all <laughs> the way down uh, in the cellar. Perfect. It's Perfect. Uh, an amazing. Dish. And look what you brought. This is a uh, this is a wine from the Languedoc, where coincidentally, cassoulet is quite oh famous, very good, quite popular. Yeah, yeah. It's Croix de Maine, uh, Malbec wine. Oh. That was recommended. So uh, we're going to try that with our pork and beans. <laughs> <laughs> it so, sounds much better if we say cassoulet. Cassoulet, yeah, yeah, yeah. A Newfoundland Fogo Island cassoulet. cassoulet. Now, yes. Zita, I want you to taste this and uh, tell me if it's as good as the pork and beans your mom made. <laughs> you know I'm, I'm going to have to say we no. Won't go <laughs> yeah. We won't go there. We won't go there. But yeah. it looks amazing. Yeah. I gotta, I, I gotta taste these beans. Mm, mm. It looks beautiful. I find it really difficult to get my uh, baked beans dark. Well, I think we've got some flavour there, Carl. Mm. Yeah, we certainly mm. do. I think you do. Very good. Yeah. That bacon's got quite a bit of um, meat on it too. Mm -hmm. My very mother fun. would be proud of you, Steve. Why? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mm. Oh, Steve. Yeah. Lovely. Beautiful. So what is the next thing then? Salt cod? We mix in. Well, it? you know, I've been thinking about that salt cod because I know that our viewers are probably going to ask, can we buy that salt cod here? Uh, I, I suppose you're going to have to go to Fogo. Absolutely, you have to go to <laughs> Fogo Island, and you know the Fogo Island Co-op, uh, mm -hmm. it does salt cod, and uh, you can buy from them. Mm -hmm. And you can certainly have it at Nicole's Cafe, where they're one of their top dishes, top selling dishes, salt cod. I've eaten at uh, Nicole's Cafe, and uh, I had the famous pot cod. Oh yes, that's which is uh, extra again an extraordinary product. There's lots of wonderful things happening on Fogo Island, folks. Now uh, I want you to go to our website, centraldairies.com, to get this wonderful recipe that Steve's prepared, and also. Zita, speaking of salt cod, she has uh, given us a recipe which you can find there as well. It's for a salt cod omelette, and believe you me, it is tasty. Zita, thank you very much for being on One Chef, One Critic. It's wonderful to, thank see you. You. to see you. Cheers. 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 For more of Chef Steve Watson's recipes, our recommended wine lists, and guest recipes, log on to centraldairies.com. 
Have a recipe that you want to share with us? Send it along to onechef.onecritic at rci.rogers.com. Be sure to attach your name, address, and contact number, and you and a guest could be eligible to win a dinner for two at one of our city's finest restaurants. Let us know what you think of the show at 757 9600. When making pasta for a baked dish, make sure you undercook it when boiling so it doesn't become overcooked or mushy. When baked. As in macaroni and cheese or a tuna casserole. Your favorite dishes. Mm hmm. Well, we go from a very traditional Newfoundland beans with pork chops to this dish, Steve, which is spotted dick. A famous English dessert, but also a dish that many Newfoundlanders have had. This one has a Newfoundland twist, so it's got our partridge berries on it. Nice、mm -hmm. partridge berry sauce. And you have. A traditional homemade gingerbread with some nice whipped cream. And speaking of partridge berries, we're going to see even more partridge berry <laughs> baked goodies now as we take you to Fogo Island, tell you about the Partridge Berry Harvest Festival they had there, and a lot more good stuff. This is the Iceberg Arena in Joe Bat's Arm, Fogo Island. Site of the Fogo Island Partridge Berry Harvest Festival. And there's plenty of food here muffins, breads, flans, and cookies, all featuring Fogo Island's delicious berries. The island's ecology, culture, and food are the building blocks of a strategy to bring tourists to Fogo Island. I'll let you in on a secret. There's another special reason why I've come here to Fogo Island, specifically right here to Joe Bat's Arm. Steve Vardy is a very, very talented chef. Originally, he's from Gander. He made a big name for himself in Ottawa, the nation's capital. He was regarded as being one of the top chefs in all of Ontario. He's cooked for some really, really big, big names. Anyway, lately, Steve Vardy, top chef, has been spending an awful lot of time right here in Joe Bat's arm. Vardy is dedicated to Shorefast's Fogo project. I asked him to tell me more about the project's emphasis on local Newfoundland food and cuisine. I've moved here、um, one year ago this weekend, so I've been a year here.、Um, and in the past year, we did open a restaurant. It's、uh, a 46 seat、uh, cafe. It's a very good mix of old meets new.、Um, but this restaurant is focusing on Newfoundland cuisine. Uh, but once again, we didn't want to have it like any other little Newfoundland homey restaurants. You would, you would get along the highway or at an outport.、Um, those are great, and there's a place in the world for all restaurants, but we needed to do something that was compelling.、Uh, why will people come to Fogo Island to eat? And to do、uh, another one of these run of the mill restaurants, it, it, it'd be fine, it'd serve a purpose, but I don't think it would put us on the map. You're coming here to, to, to look at the you know, history and the heritage of a place.、Uh, we're not altering anything. We're not you know, putting up、uh, you know, Ferris wheels and roller coasters and whatnot. We've really done nothing in, in terms of that.、Uh, all we're doing is just showcasing what's always gone on here. And we're just hoping that there's enough travelers out there that are interested in seeing that. And, and, and you're right, it doesn't come across to everyone. Like, not everyone will get Newfoundland or Fogo Island. I think most people will when they come here. But there's not certain you know, events or attractions that they're coming to see. Like, well, we're going to, you know, to Vegas because we want to go to this place. Here it's more you're coming to take in the whole package.、Um, you're here you know, for the cuisine, you're here for the hospitality, which I do believe is the best in the world. Through his Newfoundland dishes with contemporary flair, Steve Vardy and Shorefast are hoping to turn Fogo Island into a world class tourist destination. It's full steam ahead for this summer. With plans to open an ice cream shop featuring delectable berry ice creams. Well, as you can see, there are lots of exciting things happening here on Fogo Island and lots of exciting people making them happen. So, the next time you hear or read about a festival that's happening, take a closer look because it might just be happening here on Fogo Island. For One Chef, One Critic, I'm Carl Wells on Fogo Island. Mm. Partridge berries, lingon berries, red berries, I don't care what you call them, they're absolutely amazing. And that was an amazing partridge berry festival they had on Fogo. And I can't wait to go there myself, Carl. I think you should.、Mm. And you should as well, folks. And we hope 
you've enjoyed this edition of One Chef, One Critic. See you next time. Here. <laughs> so it don't become overcooked or mushy when baked. What did you say? I don't know. <laughs>